This is the sixth message in our series on the mercy of God. I'm sure you all knew that. You've been counting, right? Six messages on one subject. You'd think we covered everything, right? But as I look back, I believe that we've only begun to kind of tip our toe, if you will, into the depth of God's mercy. In focusing on God's mercy, we've talked about how we can extend that mercy to others, to our family in Christ, and to our neighbor, as Jesus has redefined it for us in the parable of the Good Samaritan. You can sum it up by saying that Jesus calls us to show mercy to everyone. My message today is perhaps the biggest challenge for many of us, and that is extending mercy to ourselves. Be patient with all things, but especially with yourself. I'm one of those people, I fall into this category, and I often have to intentionally say to myself, be merciful to yourself. Learn to be patient with yourself. Accept the gift of God's forgiveness for yourself. For some of us, we are the hardest on ourselves, often the most difficult person. For me to extend God's mercy to is myself. I'm reminded of that African-American spiritual, and if I had Katie's voice, I'd sing it for you. It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. The abundance of God's mercy extends even to me, and I can receive God's mercy. I want us to think for a moment about King David. Scripture tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. And yet David sins. God still loves him. And God desires to be reconciled with him. And so God sends the prophet Nathan to call David to repentance. And in part, Psalm 51 is David's response to this confrontation about his own sin. And he prays to God, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. My friends, repentance is really a process. And throughout the process of repentance and reconciliation, we can rely on God's mercy. Remember that through it all, God continues to love us. Love and mercy are a part of who God is, an integral part of God's nature. God is always God. We can depend on that. So God shows us love and mercy. And I think one of the reasons this is so hard for some of us to grasp is that God's love and mercy are so different from human love 
and human mercy. As humans, we often place conditions on our love and our forgiveness or restrictions, or we want to exempt certain people from our love and forgiveness. But we never need to be afraid to open ourselves to receive God's mercy. In fact, it is essential for us to receive God's mercy so that we can then Share it with others. When we consider all that God has forgiven us and all the mercy poured out on us, we are motivated, and I would use the word compelled, to extend that mercy to others. So I want to return us again to our key verse for this series. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. And I would suggest that perhaps we can turn this scripture into a personal commitment. And again, I'm going to state it as an I statement. I will receive God's mercy for myself and extend it to others in the way I have received it. I want God's mercy to rule in my life. I've been doing a lot of reading and research on this topic of God's mercy, and one of the things I found out is in the Catholic tradition, there is actually a Sunday called Divine Mercy Sunday. Is anybody familiar with that? Have you ever heard of it? I don't know. Some of you are shaking your heads, yes. So uh, it is observed on the first Sunday after Easter each year, and A lot of it is based on the work of a woman who became a saint, a Polish woman who lived in the 20th century. I'm going to try to pronounce her name. It's Saint Faristina Kowalska, and she is known, is that close? (laughs) She's the patron saint of mercy, and she recorded a personal encounters with Jesus that are considered miraculous. And she believes that Jesus instructed her to establish a feast of mercy so we would learn to take refuge in him. I want to share with you just this little quote from her writings. And she writes as if it's an invitation from Jesus. And if you can just picture Jesus, speaking directly to you, close to my merciful heart, you will meditate upon all the graces your heart has received, and a deep peace will accompany your soul. Oh, the depths of God's mercies for you and for me. And as we learn more and more to trust in the mercy of God, we will experience this peace that only God can give us. And then this experience leads us to express our thanks and praise to God. Once again, our gratitude tree is a tree filled with God's mercy. And for this message, I'd like to call this our mercy for me tree. At the bottom of the tree, just below the little red heart, is a reminder of our shepherd's care for us. The oil with which the good shepherd anoints his sheep. And it's also the oil used by the Good Samaritan to show mercy to his neighbor, a man in need of his care. But today we also have a mention of oil used by the woman in today's gospel lesson. I told Katie, I'm so glad she selected that song because I once did that as a duet. The words so well capture this woman's encounter with Jesus. 
she had kept this precious ointment in an alabaster jar for safekeeping. We don't know the cost that she paid with her life to obtain that oil and then to offer it to Jesus. She was keeping it for just that special time. She had waited to use it to express her gratitude for the one who had changed her life with his mercy, to express her love and gratitude to Jesus. All she wants to do is to thank him, to show her love for him. She had experienced through him the deep mercy of God. And this divine mercy had transformed her. Even in front of all the other people gathered at that dinner, she has the courage to show her love for Jesus. The others there at the dinner are quick to judge her. She shouldn't have even been there with Jesus, they thought. They are so much more concerned with her past, her reputation, what they consider to be her sin. They're more concerned with all of that than with her repentance. Think about that. They are focused on her sin, which God has forgiven. They miss the joy of a life transformed. How does Jesus respond to her expression of love and gratitude? He responds by receiving her gift with love and with thanksgiving. Jesus uses this occasion to teach a lesson, and he offers a parable about a money lender who cancels debts. Now we know how the parable goes. There are two persons who owe this money lender money. One is a much greater amount of debt than the other. But the money lender forgives both debts. So who would have the most gratitude, the most love? for the forgiveness of their debt. Jesus asked this question to the Pharisee, Simon. The correct answer is obvious, and Simon answers correctly. And yet, he gets everything else wrong. And that is because he has failed to show mercy. But Jesus turns to the woman to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Jesus has extended God's mercy and forgiveness, God's grace, and this gift brings the woman peace in her life. Friends, we too are recipients of God's mercy and love and grace and the gift of peace. Here in Ephesians, we read, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in trespasses. It is by grace you have been saved. This is the good news in Jesus Christ. God's mercy is poured over us like a perpetual fountain. It never runs out. God's mercy is abundant. God is always giving us more mercy and love and forgiveness, more peace. There is plenty for us to receive so that we may receive this peace of forgiveness and new life in Christ. And because 
God's mercy is abundant. There is plenty for us to share, to extend to others, including ourselves. As I mentioned, the oil in Psalm 23, some of us have been studying the 23rd Psalm, and particularly from a shepherd's point of view. This psalm is attributed to David, who was a shepherd. The same David who also wrote Psalm 51. But the Psalm 23 concludes with this beautiful promise. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, there's a much stronger translation of the Hebrew word used here that we translate in English as follow. That's kind of a weak translation. What the word actually means is to pursue. God's mercy chases us down and stays with us to make sure that we remain in the presence of God forever. God's favor chases me down everywhere I go. Here's another song I thought about, Katie. You might know this one by Bethel Music called The Goodness of God. And there's this beautiful line that says, your goodness is running after me. Can you picture that? That God pursues us, that God runs after us with mercy and goodness. God is faithful to us all of our lives and beyond. God's mercy never fails us. If we struggle with fully accepting God's gift of mercy and grace and forgiveness, God never gives up on us, and God continues to offer this precious gift to us. The psalmist writes, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The phrase house of the Lord here really means the presence of the Lord, the presence of God. So by God's mercy, we know that we are never left alone. We are never without the presence of God. And therefore, we are always able to have mercy, access to the mercy of God for ourselves and for others. Thanks be to God for the abundance of mercy to which we have access by the grace of Jesus Christ. So we join with the psalmist in proclaiming our love for God because God hears our prayers, even when they are spoken through tears, even when our prayers are spoken with sighs too deep for words. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. Thanks be to God. Amen.